Divine Truth Events These are events and presentations by Jesus and Mary. This presentation is part of the God's Way of Love series and is an introduction to God's Way of Love organization. Presented by Jesus and Mary, held on the 20th of March 2011 in town of Mergen, Queensland, Australia. This is part two. So we had a bit exhausting now, isn't it? No, we're excited. Oh, nice. <laughs> excited. That's good. We're very excited. So Mary's just drawn up for you sort of the general structure of how everything will work. Basically, the God's Way of Love organisation will have learning centres around the place, and in the learning centres there will be learning projects. Some of the projects will be specific to that particular centre because of its uniqueness and other projects will be generalised in the sense that they could be applied to every centre. So for example, if we had a learning centre set up in the desert, then obviously some of the projects will be very specific to that particular learning centre that you wouldn't apply to maybe a rainforest type uh, situation. So, so the learning centres will have very specific uh, projects available, but also a lot of the projects will be very general too. So there, are just, there are projects that are going to be needed at each location and so the learning projects will be designed around that. And then there's the learning teams in the specific location. But what we eventually feel is that once we have learning teams who are uh, well uh, versed in sort of the practice of the soul with regard to their team and their passion and so forth, they'll probably finish up, finish up travelling a bit to the other locations and there'll be a merging of information that's very important to us that we see the information available, the same kind of information available at every learning centre. And that way um, we can make sure that when other people come along and they're learning things but they're applying it to a different type of environment, that the same information is still available there and, and things like that. So if you like, there's, there's the organisation overarching everything, learning centres at different locations. The learning teams will basically be the same sets of teams in each location, but the projects may vary, and the teams obviously will work on it. They can work on a number of projects or just a singular project at a time. Yeah. Now, the way the management structure is going to work, the, we are going to ask couples to actually be the manager of the learning centres. And uh, the reason why we want them to be couples is because uh, uh, it usually indicates they've dealt with at least some of their emotions regarding, <laughs> regarding uh, their soulmate issues and intergender emotions that they have. It's not, Whereas, a, hard, it's not a hard and fast rule, obviously. Yeah, but, but, but obviously if we're not in a re relationship and we aren't attracting a relationship into our life, then we've got to look sincerely at the intergender emotions that we have. And obviously the learning centres, the, the, the people that are managing the centres, need to be quite, you know, together as a couple, like, because there's going to be a lot of pressures on them on the, at the learning centre level to, to look after different things. And there'll be a lot of spirit-based pressures as well on them. So we want to have them in a fairly secure relationship where they're working together and they have harmonious desires. So um, that's really, really important for us. And we've already asked a couple to look after the learning centre at, uh, at Cushney or Wilkstown, and that's Angela and Robert Griffiths, and they'll be the couple looking after that centre. <laughs> and we've already asked a couple to look after the learning centre that will be at, uh, in between Armadale and Tamworth, and that will be Peter and uh, Eloisa Litton Hitchens. Um, they're, they're the couple, they're not here today, but they're the couple who will be looking after that centre. Does don't, everyone know Engine Rock? You, want, you, don't, you don't want to stand up, you guys? Just, just take a bow. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so they're the couple that we've chosen for the Learning Centre here. Um, the, the reason why we've chosen those particular couples is they, they both, both the Couples. Sense of couples, collectively and individually, have a deep passion for you know working on the land and enjoying you know and and also have a passion for the divine life path. So so it's very very important that the couples have a passion. They understand 
our overall goals and, 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 and uh, the overall structure of the organisation, that they are able and willing to receive direction from myself and Mary. And that's been uh, a really important thing. Many, many are quite resistive still to receiving direction. And so we've had to choose couples that are, we don't, in other words, I don't want to fight with people about what we want to accomplish. I want to just say, this is what we want to accomplish. And everybody who's on the team wants to accomplish it because they all feel inside of their heart the reasons for it. Does that make sense? And I don't want to have, to, if I have to explain it all to somebody why they should do the loving thing, then my feelings are, well, I, I'm happy to explain, but they're not the kind of person who is yet ready to uh, support and, and, and be with us in, in the planning stages of a lot of this. And of course, discussion is very different from like convincing and arguing. Yeah, I don't want to have to convince people that we're doing the right thing. Does that make sense? There needs to be there needs to be some kind of trust in their heart already that we're doing the right thing. They've read the constitution. They already have a desire to connect to God, and that's the other thing about the couples we want to sleep. Both sides of the couple need to have a desire to connect to God and a desire to connect with each other and a desire to love others, and and that's really really important to us. So so if in one time in the future you would like to be a part of Running the learning centre, that uh, is going to be part of the, the process there of being when you when you're asked to do so. The learning projects uh, will be either couples or individuals can run a learning project. Uh, the learning projects uh, will be specifically. What are you upset about? No, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was just like. Hang on. Then, you want to say something more about the service? No, nothing. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I thought you were getting confused between teams and projects, no, no, and no. then I realised so. Yeah, no, the, te the projects will have like a project manager. In other words, the project manager has the job basically of managing the project from the start to the end, but that person is going to need to be a very humble person. A person also who is okay about giving direction. In other words, they're not, they're not submissive and, uh, and easily led and trying to please everybody because otherwise if they do that nothing will ever get done <laughs> and so what we want is a per persons that have some kind of form of self-esteem and self-worth but also they are very humble in other words they're willing to give direction in a humble manner and they also in each case need to have a strong desire for God a strong desire to connect to to others and so forth if if some of you who are parents of the children are making a lot of noise, you do need to address some of your emotions, if I can just say that to you. If we can close that door, that would be lovely. And uh, there, is, there is a bit of a disclamation of responsibility by some of, some of you who are parents at the moment. So you need to address some of that. Uh, if you hear the noise, if you know it's interrupting, there's no love being displayed to the group here then as a parent you need to examine that, what's going on there with your own child. That's an act of love, so we need to just be aware of that. And the learning projects are uh, really a, a nice way of being able to bring teams together and cooperate together. So it's going to be interesting, firstly there'll be the challenge of actually the team cooperating with each other, and then there'll be the challenge of the teams cooperating with other teams. On the, on the project, so that, that'll be a wonderful way of challenging some of those emotions. Um, um, AJ, this question might be coming from injury because I come from the corporate world, yep. but um, are you, how does competition regarding within teams, is that, would that be encouraged in God's way of love? Competition? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> no. In fact, if anybody is competitive, they'll be asked to leave the team. Yeah, that's okay. When you say competition, Bob, do you oh. mean like... Oh, no. who, who does the most trees today? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 it was more about um, um, working on, if, if there was two teams working on the same project, right. that they go off separately, and then the teams work really hard to get to a result so they can join together and bring a... Bring yeah, yeah, some, no. 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 We don't, we're, we're not into creating competition yeah. in any regard. 
and and also there's a lot of unloving emotions in that yeah. and there's a lot we don't want to create competitive competitive spirit between everyone yeah. it's about joining and merging with everyone we want to become a one with each other not yeah. not actually That's create like division yeah, yeah. Thank you. and and there will also not be a focus on sort of the same ways that corporate structures will work we're, we're the, remember I said at the beginning, we want to run these things exactly the same thing, way as things are run in the spirit world. And the way things are run in the spirit world is that the people in the most harmony with love are the ones who have the responsibility because they are the most loving and the most humble. And as the most humble, they are also the most passionate for their subject. And passion and humility and love are going to be the three key ingredients for any person. Now, we may ask a person to become a leader and because of becoming a leader, they become more arrogant and we'll find straight away we'll be asking somebody else to become a leader if that happens. You'll find there'll be a dropping and changing of a lot of these things, particularly initially as people get stuck in their addictive emotions. We want to prevent addiction from being in play right across the organisation. And that even occurs with all the volunteers. So, so for example, if, if, if a group of volunteers comes to do a job and we find that there's a lot of addictions in play and it's actually interfering with, the, with, the, with everything, and even if it's not, we will, we will actually address the uh, addictions. And if the addictions are not addressed on site by those persons, those persons will be asked to leave until they can address those addictions and come back when they're finished. And if that means that everybody has to leave the site, nothing gets done with that, so be it. Does that make sense? We're not going to have a focus on getting an outcome physically. We're going to have the focus on getting an outcome at the soul level. That's the focus, helping people develop at the soul level. So, so it's going to be very, very different to what you're used to doing in a lot of ways. And, uh, and, and just because you've volunteered, don't think that you're not going to get some feedback, right? And uh, because because you will get feedback just by being on the property. Does and, that make sense? And in my mind, that is the biggest benefit. Like that's the that's the great thing. You know, we get the the reflection of where we're acting out of harmony with love in whatever area in whatever action. And that's the that's the gift to me. Um, these are like the byproducts of a grander gift. Yeah. Yeah. So remember, the, the, the whole goal of the organisation is to bring people from a low condition of love to at one with God. That's the whole goal of the organisation. And these are just things that we've set up. They're just things that we've set up to, to bring people to that condition. So that's the purpose of the organisation, is to start putting love in practice and seeing how it changes your life. That's the purpose. The purpose isn't to create something. The purpose isn't to get jobs done. None of that is the purpose. So I'm very happy to have the land at Wilkesdale completely empty for another three years without anything happening on it, Nothing because nobody is in harmony with love while they're there. And so I ask them all to leave. I'm perfectly happy to do that. Like, I have no investment in the outcome. You need to understand that, that I have no investment in the outcome. I am only invested in your soul. I'm only wanting to, uh, your soul to grow. That's the only purpose of these, of these projects. In the end, I feel and believe that as we develop our souls, the learning centres will change quite markedly. As a result of the learning centres changing, the world will have a demonstration of divine love in action. And that is going to be very attractive. I feel that is a potential outcome, but it's not a guaranteed outcome. The reason why it's not a guarantee is that it's dependent upon yourselves as people being a part of the project wanting to develop in love. That's the dependency. And if you don't want to, that's fine too. I'm happy to leave the Wilkesdale land and empty until such time as we have some people who want to develop in love and do it this way. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. So I'm quite firm with those kind of things. You'll find me quite firm about those things. And you'll also find me um, asking the managers of the learning centres to be quite firm about those things too. So that's the goal. And uh, the learning teams will be the way, they'll be, as we've listed before, the, all the different learning teams, and the learning teams will have a team leader. The team leader is going to be the person who wants to learn the most, and the person who's in the most humble condition and also has 
able, is able to deal with their emotions about giving people direction and is able to deal with rage and anger from other people in a loving manner. Does that make sense? Because you are going to get, as a team leader, rage and anger from other people, guaranteed. And you need to be able to deal with it all in a loving manner. And so if the team leaders can't do that, then again, to step down. If, if that means that there is nobody in that team that is in a loving manner who we, can, uh, who we can ask to do those things, then actually I'll be talking to the team and, and perhaps leading the team for a short period. If after the short period the team still is not in a condition, I'll disband the team until such a time as somebody comes along who is in that loving condition. Does that make sense? I'm not going to continue teams that are in a love loving condition no matter what the outcome. So even if disbanding the team means that something doesn't get addressed and we can't do something, like let's say it's a construction team. If I disband the construction team, nothing will get built. And that's okay with me. Did you follow me? Yeah. Yeah. It's very important to understand that I'll be firm on the issues of love. That's, that's where I'll be firm. And it's very, very important to understand that as the learning centres grow, the managers will be firm on condition on love. And once they grow and are able to be firm with those things, what will happen is that all of us will start having a more stronger focus on love itself instead of a focus on trying to accomplish something, trying to get things done, trying to be in our addictions so that we can feel good about ourselves and all those kind of things. That's not the goal of the census. Is there any questions about that? Far away. It's a question, isn't it? No, it's not. It's not a question. Sorry. No, sorry. And questions? Is there any questions? Hello? Let's proceed. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned something before, AJ, which is a really big point. You said the leaders of the learning teams will be the people who want to learn the most. And really this whole organisation is everyone in a leadership or management position is humbly acknowledging they have a lot to learn about God and love and that they want to desperately. So that's a big qualifier probably in our list. Yeah. It's, it's like a, um, someone who desires to learn. Not desires to say, I know, but desires to learn. Now under the terms of the Constitution, and no person in the entire organisation is ever going to be paid. So there will be no payments to any individual. They'll all be volunteering their effort. And as a result of that, anything that you would like to thank them for is going to need to be a private gift that you give to them. Does that make sense? So, that so includes can, ourselves. That includes ourselves, by the way. So uh, every, every single person in the organisation, every bit of money the organisation receives as an organisation will be spent on doing something for these learning centres, learning projects or learning teams. Nothing will be spent on any individual in the organisation under the terms of the Constitution. Does that make sense? We may, may have, however, to pay for expenses of things that we buy in and so forth. And of course, those kind of things certainly will come out of the funds that of the, of the uh, organisation. So it's very important to understand some of the uh, rules that are in the Constitution regarding the way money is going to be used and also the way money is going to be received. In fact, we are not going to receive money, no matter how much that money is, we're not going to receive money unless there are no strings attached to the money. Uh, in other words, there are no emotional strings attached to the money. In other words, I'll, I'll give you a thousand dollars, but I want to as soon as we hear the but I want him, no, I'm sorry, you need to take a thousand dollars back. That's the way it's going to go. Does that make sense? And that's a part of the Constitution, actually. So we want to get everyone into the stage where we're giving gifts to, to each other. We're giving gifts to the world. We're giving gifts to each other. That's, you'll find when you fully engage your passion and on top of that, fully engage your desires and longings in the direction towards God and are fully ready and willing to deal with all the emotions that come up as a result of that, the money itself, the, the means by which you will live will automatically flow to you. 
And that's what I've had to do. That's what each of us need to learn. Does that make sense? And the organisation needs to practice that, put that in practice, just like it needs to put everything else in practice. And if that means that the organisation sits on the shelf for six months and nothing happens to anything because of the lack of funds, then you can, we can all feel our frustration about that if you have any. I, I personally won't have any frustration about it. I'm perfectly happy for the organisation to sit on the shelf for six months and nothing happens. Because there's a there's a purity in the dream that we want to maintain. Yeah. There's a feeling that you know we're very used to in this world of doing things, cutting corners, slap dash, it'll be right, we'll fix it up later. We're not we we're purists. <laughs> we really really want. We we see that so many. Nothing but exactly. Put your hand on your head. Sorry, I don't know where that comes from. But that's about right. Yeah. We have a dream, and, and we want to carry that. Yeah. Just, it, just like we would like you to engage your dreams and carry them out. And we want to illustrate that to you. It's like love, you know, um, watered down love, or love that's got error in it. It's not love anymore, is it? So we really want to maintain something that upholds the principles of love. Otherwise, it doesn't feel worth it to us. So we're not going to compromise on the issues of truth or love. And uh, of course, both myself and Mary are not perfected no. at this point. So, so we may have errors that come up in the process for ourselves where we need to correct them and, uh, and change. And that will apply to everybody else, of course, associated with the organisation as well, that we need to correct and change. So, but the areas of truth and love are the two areas that we want to really focus on and make sure that we stay pure to, that we stay connected to those two areas. And, and we're going to do that, we're already doing that of course ourselves all the time, and what we want to do is illustrate how to do that to you through practical means. Uh, Alex had a question I think. Um, I'm just curious as to the, the practicalities of some of the teams. Yep. Like, um, say for instance, you've got a, a, a team of meetings and you say, I want you to channel about how we're going to come up with new energy. Yep. And you get 10 people with 10 different information. Yep. Um, what then? The team leader will then say, well, obviously, we're getting conflicting information, so there's some errors in this information, obviously. There can't be all conflicting and yet be, this, be truth in them all. So, so we would not release that information. What we would do is we would look at the medium's emotions in every single case. In the, so, medium, in the mediumship team, there will be a strong focus on the emotional condition of every medium. Yeah. So <laughs> at the, all times. The mediumship team is actually going to get hammered by us probably initially. <laughs> <'cause if they're laughs> I, like I feel like they're going to be like the, the scapegoat a lot of the time, like the engineering. Hey, the medium's told us this and this shit. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and pass the buck like a new company. Well, that's possibly true, Alice, but we have to deal with that as it happens. We wouldn't be a very loving... Um, yeah, not a loving engineering team doing yeah. that. But, yeah. but, the, but the truth is that, that the mediumship, it is very... You, you've seen me do like six now, five or six seminars about mediumship, and the reason why I've done it is I've, I've, all of you who have decided to do mediumship in the future, go back over that information work your way through that information again. The mediumship is going to be quite important in a number of areas and, and it'd be really great if the team itself starts understanding as soon as, if I'm doing some mediumship and Mary's doing some mediumship and our mediumship disagrees, straight away both of us could be in error. So we need to address that error rather than competing with each other and say, oh no, I think I'm right, Mary says, oh, I think you're wrong. And, and you know, all that. Yeah, you know, of course it's you, you know, like that kind of thing. And, and we need to, the team leader of the mediumship group is going to have to be very connected with their emotions, very connected with God, and very humble, but also very much willing to cope with the rage and anger from their medium group, as well as the spirits with the medium group. Because there will be many spirits of the medium group projecting rage and anger through the mediums to the leader of the team. Does that make sense? And so that's going to be quite an intense job. 
and Mary's decided that uh, she was thinking of leading that team initially, uh, just to uh, you know help people through that process. And, yeah. But that, there's other people in line for the job as well. There's others in line for the job. I might start the role. Yeah. So does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. You know that person. Yeah. 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 So, so it's really important with all the teams to understand that we're not, it's not about competing, it's also not about saying, oh, blaming them, blaming them, blaming, you know, none of that's going to be happening in this organisation. I'm perfectly happy to remove absolutely every team leader if I have to, and disband every team if I have to. I'm perfectly happy to do that. I feel that won't be necessary. But you must understand, like I said earlier, I have no emotional investment in this continuing. I want it to continue harmonious with love. And anything else that happens, it will be dealt with. Yep. Now, you know me well enough by now to know that I'm going to deal with it in a loving manner. But you also know me well enough to now, by now that I'm very honest and truthful and blunt. <laughs> so I will not hold back what's going on to you, but I'm not going to either get into a rage or upset with you. When have I ever done that? So I'm not going to do that. And uh, and eventually, the uh, learning centre managers will not be doing the same. Obviously, initially there might be some teething issues that they have emotionally, but as they work their way through those emotions, eventually we'll get to the point where actually every learning centre's manager, every learning projects uh, project manager, every learning teams. Uh, leader are all really in a really good state of love and once we get to that place it's going to be amazing what we accomplish in that place but that's going to take some time because yeah. at the moment like I said yesterday we've all got a loss of addiction it's, it's very similar remember yesterday we had the circles up and the big addictions and the fear and then our true selves in the middle and I said the most painful hardest work is actually breaking down the addictions and the fears. Once we get to our true self, it's a powerhouse. It's going to be the same here, you know. In the beginning, we're going to be confronted with a lot of our addictions, a lot of our fears, a lot of our investments in what we want to happen. Uh, but if we can be humble through that process, wow. Yeah. It's going to be very powerful. A lot powerful. of potential. And you guys have got amazing souls. Like, oh, well, I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> to see it in action, you know. Well, There's so think... much creativity and diversity in this group. Yeah. yeah. Right. There's a huge variety of knowledge and information in, in amongst the audience themselves, let alone all of the people who want to be involved in the teams all around the earth at the moment. And if you consider that, there's a, a great potential here for us to accomplish a lot of very lovely things, very loving things too, in, in this environment. But it's going to require a sincere upholding of the two main points, which are truth and love. And whenever you'll find me quite straight with everyone out of harmony with that. So don't feel offended if you get sent home from a team after you went to volunteer. Don't be offended with that. Just embrace what occurred and allow yourself to work through the emotions of that. Like there will be times when that will happen to you, possibly. So don't, don't be afraid of that. Allow yourself to be open to receiving advice rather than close down to it. Yeah. And, you know, I've, I've lived with AJ now, two years, and in the beginning it can feel really like, oh, I just took a step, oh, there's an error there. I think another step, oh, another error there. Oh, oh, error, 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 error. I don't want to think at all. Yeah. I don't want to that kind of feeling, you know. You like know, you know there's 25 errors, and it can feel really confronting. And the key is to, like, to be humble in that process and allow the the. A lot of the time, I used to resist the emotional, um, the emotional processing of all those errors, and I'd just carry them around and go, "But that one, that one, that one, that one." And and that becomes you feel really constricted by that. You're all in a space now where you've done some emotional processing, you know so much truth that you can now step into this more humbly, more open-heartedly. You know the power of prayer and God in this whole process. So, yeah, you'll be well equipped. Many of you are still in that addictive phase of preventing your fears. And you're very, very scared 
as a result of that and you're not engaging your relationship with God to get you through that place and hopefully through this process we'll help you engage that place and, and, and actually get to the point where you enjoy having feedback, you enjoy discovery, you enjoy... Which is where I feel knowledge. I am now. It's yeah. like, oh, thank you. I, I, now there's something else I can work with. I didn't see that before. Yeah. Whereas before I would like... Don't tell me, don't tell me. Yeah, yeah. Not, not another thing. Yeah. You know, don't tell me another thing. I don't want to hear any more. <laughs> That's the kind of thing we need to avoid here. Because we're going to need to be told a lot of things. Yeah, so from our spirit friends, from yeah. God, and from different people on earth who are in the condition to do so. That's the quickest way to do this. So, yeah. Yeah. How's everyone feeling? Quite enthusiastic about it? Yeah. 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 Should be quite different, hey? Yeah. So we're, we're looking forward to putting it into practice. Now, we want to discuss with you uh, some practicalities about the whole issue. Um, two weeks' time, we're starting at 10 a.m. in the morning, uh, and we're meeting with team after team after team, basically. I'm going to describe, uh, initially, the teams. Uh, we might start with the teams or the pro The teams, I feel, we'll start with next two weeks' time. Um, We'll probably start with the service team. So the first day will be about service teams. Uh, remember the service teams are the ones that are serving the organisation internally. And then uh, the second day will be about the action team to, in terms of externally. And what we would like to do is give you some homework now if you're interested. We just might perhaps need to put the Well, I didn't in. feel they were interested. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you interested in those? Yeah. Um, should we put up the list of teams again? Because people never have to think about it. Um, right. is, the, is it going to be on the website yet? Is, um, I'm, um, I'm a bit under the hammer with all the website design, uh, but I will try to get this. Uh, I'll get this presentation on the, the, the current website. The download on the current website under seminars uh, as a PDF. I'll try and get that on there over the next day or two. So if in a few days' time you want to list, if you want to print out this document, uh, it's a four-page document uh, as a PDF, and on there it does list each of the teams and it lists each of the main project areas at this point. Remember, the project areas, of course, will change as time goes on, but the teams. Uh, may, may finish up evolving a bit as well, but they are the main teams, and I explain some of the teams in the document. So Because your homework will involve you deciding which or which, however many teams you would like to be involved in. Um, so, so you'll need a list to say, oh, I think it's this one. Yep. And then your homework is? Um, well, firstly, is to feel your passions and desires. So many of you are still struggling with knowing what you really want, what you want with your life, what you want in the long term. Forget about earth changes, forget about you know not having or do having your soul made, all those kind of things. Feel about your passions and desires. And also, if you just because you're an engineer now doesn't mean you're not going to be your passion isn't to be a painter. Like don't think, oh well I've done this for 20 years, so therefore I should be in that team. Yeah. And don't think that if you've never played a musical instrument, don't think that music is one of your passions. Do you know what I mean? If you've never acted, don't think that you couldn't be in the drama class. If you've never sung, don't believe that you, you know, could be in a group that finishes up singing. Like, don't, don't shut down your desires through your previous experience. What I'm asking you to do is to be a lot more open-minded than that and a lot more open with your heart and let yourself feel your true passions of nature. Does that make sense? That's the first part of your homework. Uh, Shannon? Shannon. Um, can we be involved with more than one team? Yes. You can be involved in all if you like, but you're going to find it very hard <laughs> to do that. But yes. Next. And our children going to be, can they be a part of the team? Yep. They can, as long as the parents don't expect other members of the team to parent their own children. This is a problem that often happens here in the seminars, is that there is an expectation that other people parent their children or they don't parent their children at all. And the truth is the parent needs to deal with that, address that issue. But yes, the children are welcome, and the children are even welcome to be a part of the team 
in terms of what they want to do on the team as well. There's also a duty of care that we have though with the children in that you need to take particular care with some of the teams. Some of the teams will have dangerous activities and obviously the children will need to be uh, educated in, in, in their own personal safety. And remember that children up to the age of seven don't have a very good no spatial awareness and as a result of that they are reflecting primarily our own emotions. So, so we need to deal with our own emotions about accidents and things like that that might occur. Remember, there is no insurance of the organisation at all, and that's something that's a practical thing I wanted to raise with you. There's no, if we insured an organisation such as this, it would cost uh, quite a few tens of thousands of dollars, which we don't have. And, uh, and also, um, we feel that every person needs to be educated that, that we have a duty of care towards our own self to not engage in unsafe activities or practices, and that includes, if we have children, to take responsibility for those children in those particular areas. If you need to get insurance for yourself, just in case you are hurt in some way, there are insurances you can buy now, up until obviously the time of earth changes occurring, that, uh, that can protect your income uh, to a degree if you have an accident, and they're only about 80 to $100 a year per annum to, to buy, as long as you're relatively healthy and fit. So we can give you some of the details of that in the next meetings that we have, but that's something to consider for each person. Um, every activity, everything will be voluntary, voluntary. So that's the thing to consider here. We're obviously doing this on, uh, you know, basically based on the collective desire of each individual. And so for that reason, we will not be able to probably even uh, pay for the, any insurance. We are trying to obtain some insurance for the organisation itself, uh, but uh, we, we have to obtain a non-profit status before that insurance can be obtained. And we wanted to get started on some of the Learning Centre projects before that occurs, so you need to be aware that actually it, other people actually own those properties at this point and uh, we'll continue to do so until we receive non-profit status for the, for the organisation. But as far as including children, I feel they're very qualified at learning and so they yeah. you know, Much more qualified than many of you actually are. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So you'll find that children uh, will often be an inspiration as well. Uh, often uh, they'll be able to receive information from the spirit world. Many of you are still not listening to your children. You're still telling them what to do, controlling them and so forth, not listening to them and listening to what they're saying. And through the process, you'll learn to do a lot of those things a lot more easily, I feel. So yeah, children, it'd be great to have children along. Don't expect other people though to look after your children and don't expect that, uh, uh, that uh, there's a, like a crèche or something like that at the, at the centre because there will not be, probably ever, because that, that is somebody else taking responsibility for your own child. Does that make sense? So it's not a harmonious club. Yes. Um, what sort of time will be be needing to give to a particular team. For instance, two that I could be interested in, but obviously don't want to spread myself too thinly. Uh, you don't have to give any time to a team if you don't wish. It, it's, it's all about your personal yeah. experience. So there's no rules about how much time, when you rock up, when you don't. Team leaders obviously are going to be present at every time they need to be present. But aside from that, the individual team members are totally driven, it's going to be totally driven by design. So, so you can rock up whenever, whenever, ne never, <laughs> and, uh, and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's if, totally up to you. If there are issues with love, obviously, if you, you know, if you're uh, working on a project and the, the whole team says, yes, leader, we want to do this, and nobody turns up, then there's obviously an issue of uh, love and desire that the team leader would have to address. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I guess, but there's no tally about. Sure, but um, I guess if there is a with a team flavour coming through that we're going to create something that it will need a definite participation from all the folks. But one of the but things we're going to address yeah. is the addiction to create something. Oh, yeah. So, so, oh, yeah. so no, 
we won't actually have a focus on the creation, we'll have a focus on being in harmony with love as we create. Does that make sense? The, the projects are just there to actually engage the teams in an activity that then cause the teams to, to have the law of attraction event occur, which then we can address so we can help you emotionally. That's the whole purpose of the project. The project isn't to create something else. The main purpose of the project is to focus on your soul and create an event so that you, you, you have a whole group of things happening as a result that helps you work through something emotionally. That's the whole purpose of the project. Now, the secondary purpose of the project is to create something, but it's not the primary. The primary purpose is that soul focus. Many of you will find that very hard to get used to. Many of you are addicted to outcome, addicted to getting something done. You think about your own properties. You go out there working in the garden, why do you do it? A lot of times you're doing it because you want it to look pretty, right? Or you want it to, something to happen with the, you want an outcome. And sometimes you work yourself to death to get that outcome. But none of that will be happening on the property. If you're like, we know someone working themselves to death, no, you're out. <laughs> You need to go home and have a rest and then work out why you're working yourself to death before you come back again. Do you know? Because that's an emotion. That's a feeling that they need to do with before they'll become harmonious with love of themselves. So there'll be many things that will be confronted that at the moment you think won't be confronted through this process. Does that make sense? So just if you engage it and are brave enough to engage it, you'll find your progress quite rapidly. If, if, you, if you're not brave enough to engage it, you'll come along expecting some outcomes, expecting people to listen to you, or expecting something else, expecting one of your addictions met, you're going to find it very, very difficult to survive very long under those circumstances. Is there enough for that? Yeah? Katrina? I wasn't here for a few questions. This may have been answered. Do you need to live here and be in physical proximity to be able to be a part of this, in a practical sense? No, but in a practical sense, you don't need to be in a certain location to be a part of it. Um, so obviously people, there are teams, for example, there's a production team. The production team looks at the production of videos and all these other kind of things. There's a whole translating part of that. There's, there's at the moment on that team, there's people in Greece working on translation and putting subtitles on, product, on, on videos that are produced on YouTube. Now, they are a part of that team, but they are in Greece. So, you know, you, it depends on the technology available to us as to how involved we're going to get. If you're involved in the Flora team, there are certain things you can do, it, it, even if you're away, away, away. It is documentation of the Flora itself, finding out what soils, what, you know, what it's for, what flowers it has, where you plant, you know, all these different details, getting all that information. Somebody needs to get all that information. That can be done anywhere in the world. So there's a lot of parts of these teams that can be done anywhere in the world and then given to a central source. We've got at the moment 28 terabytes of data storage available, to, which is like, uh, I don't know if you know your bytes, but that's 28, right, thousand gigabytes. Sorry, 28 gigabytes. Yeah, 28,000 gigabytes. So gigabytes is... Right. That's how many bytes of storage we have available. In terms of translating that, all the libraries on the planet won't, will fit into that space. Right. Will fit into that space. So, so we've got enough storage space to document lots and lots of things. And we've got the ability to buy more. That, by the way, is backed up what's called RAID storage space. It's redundant arrays. So we've got enough storage space now, we've just purchased some more with some funds that uh, some people gave us, and we've just purchased enough to actually store large amounts of information about all sorts of areas and walks of life. So and the purpose of that is to have that data stored and able to be retrieved at any time, point of time in the future that a we could refer to. AJ actually spends quite a lot of his time backing up the data that we've already created, the, the um, video yep. files, the files and things so that it can't be lost in the future. If, if all of you can have a conception at the moment, if you think about it, when some events occur earth-wise, earth-change-wise, where are all the libraries? 
most of them are in cities or towns, let's face that. Um, the bigger libraries are in cities generally. Where are all the cities? On the coast. Uh, where is most of the production facilities? Most of them need the heavy amounts of water, most of them on the coast. Where are all the intellectual people who have all the information that know about the processes? Most of them on the coast. Now, can you see a problem with that? If we have large water-based events, and there's a high likelihood that would be the case, um, can you see that the majority of those persons and all of that information will perish? Now, you know, for me, while that's not that critical, uh, because we can always channel the information, and uh, it's, it's very important that we retain as much of the information as we possibly can at this point. And so having some kind of storage mechanism where we can retain the information is very important. Does that make sense? And so, so we're thinking about all of that as well, to be able to do that easily. And so for those people who are part of the, there's a documentation team, for example, or what we're calling the records team. The records team is going to have lots of very interesting things to do uh, right across the board because if we need to document and record and video every single thing we do. And we want to see the relationship between the soul condition. So we want to take photos of people who started the project. Photos of the people who ended the project. We want to look at their condition. We want to examine their condition in relationship to the project and what happened on the project. We want to do all sorts of things. They're already the team that comes across to us on Tuesdays, we're going through with them. You planted this plant, didn't you? Yeah. Why have the kangaroos eaten your plant? <laughs> what, what emotions are about that, right? So, so we, we, need to, we need to document all of these things so that we have some kind of emotional connection with everything that we do. And, uh, and it's very important that it's an emotional connection. This is not about getting the jobs done. It's about understanding that when your soul is in the job, now you can really accomplish a lot of things. If your soul isn't in the job, we would love you just to go and find another job or leave rather than do a job that your soul is not in. Now, sometimes we're going to ask you to do a job that your soul is not in and just see how you respond to that. Just to challenge whether you're, just going, whether you're still going to continue following someone's direction even when you're not passionate about it. No? So there's all sorts of things that are going to happen in this, in this process, right? Many of you will be so frustrated and angry. Right. And what was anger again? Anger covered, uh, what did the anger cover again? Covered, oh no, addictions, yeah, yeah, see? See, what we're wanting to do is, is expose your addictions. And so some of you are going to get angry in this process. And that's okay, but it's not okay to stay on the property while you're in a rage with others. So, we're not, we're not going to allow the rage to be projected at others and annoyance to be rejected at others. You'll be instantly asked to leave as soon as that's done. We're happy for you to go away, deal with that rage and anger, let you see that it will come back and try again. We're happy to do that. But we're not happy for the location itself to be a centre where everyone's projecting rage at each other because nobody wants to deal with their addiction. Sounds like a lot of workplaces are working. <laughs> Is that right. How many times does that happen in your work environment? Where this person's angry with that person, they've had a few going on for three years and, and everybody goes, yeah, yeah, they just don't get along. And it's no wonder that, you know, whenever those jobs overlap, what happens? Nobody wants to cooperate with each other, they're all trying to be doing the opposite thing. None of that we want happening. It's going to happen because of our addictions, but we're going to address it. Does that make sense? The key is to not be so top, caught up in getting feedback you don't want to hear. But many of you are still like, oh, I don't want to hear that. Oh, you like, ter feel terrible about yourself every time you hear something bad about yourself. Honestly, you need to enjoy hearing something. Like it's like looking in the mirror and going, oh, well, there's, there's the wart there. Yeah, let's get rid of that. You know, like that's what we need to do. We need to look at ourselves before we can make changes. So enjoy it's, the process. Yeah. It's the hardest part seeing the wart. Like I tried to like get rid of the wart while I'm not really looking at it. It doesn't work. Okay. So you gotta see it properly first. You gotta look. Yeah. And then come down next.
Uh, yes, yes, something else that really happened is with, with some of the people working on the teams was they actually enjoyed it. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they and that's what we feel is going to happen a lot. Yeah. Like, you're going to, I feel, many of you might be a bit afraid about all what we're saying, but the truth is you really enjoy yourselves. How many of you have come out to our place now on that team that Dennis is, that we've been going through with Dennis, has been, so what is there about? It's about maybe close to 20. Um, how many of you have not enjoyed it at all? Like, yeah, so everyone's enjoyed it at least some. <laughs> How many of you have found that it's been really good in terms of learning, but also finding the relationship between emotions and the land and plants? And you've been all finding that? Yeah. So it's very powerful actually when you learn in a practical way and you'll find it really enjoyable. So, yeah. 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 Um, it didn't happen on your property, but Sam and I were going to plant bananas. And uh, we went out, marked out the Ribonati spiral and dug the holes and created the swales. And all of a sudden, Sam realised he didn't have gloves on. And there was no pain, and her hands didn't hurt, and there was no blisters. Yeah. And she just realised that she was totally immersed and, and loved what she was doing. Yeah. And so that there's, no, there's no pain and joy, eh? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's just beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And you find that that will be replicated over and over and over again. Yeah. It's going to be fun, guys. Yeah. Trust me. Ah. Thanks. Um, I was just wondering, is it going to be encouraged, like, if I got angry, am I allowed to straight away get in my anger? Well, right in my You've got to hold it in. <laughs> You said that we've got to go on here and build it and then if come back. So if, if as soon project. as you project the anger at another person, you will be asked to leave. So you know the diff there's a difference between processing and projecting. Yeah, yeah, I've just got this thing and I've got to go away and process it. Yeah, no, you're allowed to process it there and then, uh, but as soon as you project it, you will be asked to leave. Yeah. As soon as another person is receiving it from you, you'll be asked to leave. Does that make sense? Like, Understandably so. Hey? We want it to be a place of love, not a place of anger. And initially, so a lot of us might be getting angry about the whole process, so you know, we, we need to own that anger. Many of us still not owning our anger. We're still in the projection of the anger because we still want the addiction there. And we need to address that. It's one of the primary things we need to address. So, and, and you know, it's not going to be, you're angry, Lynn. <laughs> it's, it's, Okay, I'm feeling this from you. Here's your opportunity. Here's your opportunity to feel it. To, to deal with that. I'm, I'm seeing something that maybe you're not seeing in yourself right now. I can see it. Here's your opportunity. If you don't take the opportunity, then your desire isn't there. So you need to leave yeah. until you desire. If you don't take the opportunity when it's present in an environment where that is set up specifically for you to take the opportunity, then you obviously don't have a desire. Does that make sense? And if you don't have a desire, then what's the point? There's no point to it. I think our batteries are starting to die, so I'll just, uh, just replace yours first and then... <laughs> um, so what, where were we? Oh yes. So, um, yeah, it's really important to take the opportunities that are present and the whole, the whole, the whole place is set up just for you to take the opportunity. Like, that's, our, that's the gift of the place. So if you're in resistance to taking the opportunity and you're projecting the anger at other people, you obviously don't, not us, you obviously don't have a desire to actually feel it emotionally. Does that make sense? And so if there's no desire to feel it emotionally, do you really, like, should the rest of the environment put up with you being in that state? It's not loving to expect them to, and so you'll be asked to leave. Does that make sense? You find it won't happen very often. Once you get into the zone, you'll get so used to it that you think, why isn't the rest of the world like this? That's what happens. Karen? Mm -hmm. um, well, 
how much help would there be available to um, access your envelope to help them get the um, we're not going to take responsibility for anyone's emotion, ever. We're not going to take responsibility for helping you with your emotions either, by the way. Do, do you understand? I am not responsible for helping you to feel your emotions. Can I say that again? Because I think I need to. Because many of you expect me to be responsible. I am not responsible. Mary is not responsible. None of the leaders are responsible. None of the team leaders are responsible. None of the learning centre managers are responsible. None of the project team leaders are responsible for helping you deal with your emotions. You are totally responsible for yourself. That's it. If you desire to not take responsibility for yourself, you will be asked to leave. Quite simple. However, the environment will be set up for you to deal with the emotion if you desire to access it. Does that make sense? There's a very big difference between taking responsibility and not taking responsibility. I feel that I'm helping AJ by saying, I can feel this emotion within you and creating an opportunity. That's there is helping. nothing else that the team leader needs to do other than that. And then when the person says, oh, I don't feel like I am, like, you're, well, you're now going home. So you need to leave right now. And there's nothing else the team leader needs to do aside from that. Because it's not the team leader's responsibility for you to, do, to help you deal with your emotion. Does that make sense? Now, many of you are still not dealing with emotions because you do want it to be someone else's responsibility to help you, which is the addiction in play. And we need to trigger that addiction. We need to get every single person who's associated with the learning centres to understand that while they want someone else to help them, they are not realising the person with the greatest amount of potential to help you is, is God. And you need to connect to her first and, and learn from her through this process. So own the anger, feel the anger, but don't expect someone else to tell you what it's all about. Does that make sense? Because that is between you and God, really, in the end. That is between, like I said to you many times about desire, if you truly desire to know what something is about, you will always find out if you truly desire so therefore, if I'm not finding out, there's not a true desire. So deal with the desire. Ask yourself why you don't want to find out first. So does that make sense, Karen? So, yeah. so we want to take away, we want to be very careful with the team leaders and the team and the project leaders, like making them responsible for 25 people's emotion. Does that make sense? Because they are not responsible for any of those emotions. They can just point it out, and when the person responds badly, say, so sorry, catch you later. <laughs> and let's get on with it. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? And then that person will learn, oh, I've got to take personal responsibility for my emotion here. If they don't want to, they won't. If they do want to, they will. Quite simple. And when they do want to, they'll find out what it's all about. They'll feel it. They'll feel their anger. They'll feel their fear. And they'll feel their, you know, they'll feel their addiction. They'll feel their fear. They'll feel their grief when they want full responsibility. Yep. Good question. Jen? Um, how does it fit in uh, in the broader community for new people who are per perhaps not experienced the divine path and to come onto the property? To any make... person is allowed on the property at, at any time, okay. uh, day or night, whatever. However, if love is not displayed, they'll be asked to leave the property. So, so if they if they come onto the property in the middle of the night and they're noisy and there's other people on the property, and maybe some of those people are sleeping on the property, they'll be asked to leave, quite simple, quite simple because they're not displaying love. So, so it doesn't matter whether they understand the path or not. It doesn't matter at all. The actual process of the being confronted with truth and love at every moment will teach them the path. It's a totally different way of learning than what we're perhaps used to by coming along to these seminars. You know, when we come along to these seminars, we sit down, we hear a bunch of information, a lot of which we don't pro actually process, and most of which we don't put into practice, right? And then, and then we come along to another one two weeks later and do the same thing, and another one two weeks later and do the same thing, and so forth. And over a long period of time, we learn something, but oftentimes it's not a huge shifts at the soul level. What's going to happen with this 
is that people won't even have to know anything about the path. They can just come along and say, oh, because I wanted to be here, something brought me here, whatever. That's fine. I wanted to be a part of your, you know, building nest box team, you know? Like, so we build the next, they build a nest box and all of a sudden they're projecting rage in their next one over. I'm like, sorry, mate. That's not allowed here. Like, you're not allowed to do that it's here. It's pretty simple, really, isn't it? And like, they go, why am I allowed to? Because it's unlucky. And we need to address some. You need to go away and look. Now, they'll learn in practice in that regard, and they'll learn, oh, loving, unloving, yeah, if I'm angry, I'm unloving. Quite simple. They don't need to come to a seminar and listen to that for four hours. It's, They've already just learned it in practice. Yeah. It's my personal dream that people would know us by our love. Yeah. Not by any other teaching or, you know, any other symbol, label, you know, just that they would know us by our love. Yeah. And if you think about it, that's going to be pretty powerful, isn't it, don't you think? Like, imagine we don't have to have seminars anymore. We just do, to go along with these projects, do, do, do this, do that. And all of a sudden, someone addresses the emotion and we go into the emotion, we feel that, another thing, emotion gone. See you later to that emotion. And, and we're closer to God in the process and, and we've just learned something, but we've learned it in a practical environment, situation where we're still accomplishing things and doing things day to day. That's how the divine love path really is. And that's how, like, that's what Mary's experienced in the last two years of living with me. And, and many of you are yet to learn that. Because you almost sometimes think of it as a religion still, almost. Like, almost as, a, as if it's not if something that affects every way, every area of your life. You, know? you think you can turn it off and turn it on here, turn it off there, turn it on here. It's not like that. And you think you have to come along and understand. You don't have to come along and understand. You have to experience. That's where most of us fall short because we're, we're, we're presented with experience after experience after experience by God through our law of attraction and we don't experience them. And so we've got a, uh, what was that about? Like, you know, we were using our intellect constantly to discover what things are about when all we need to do is engage it emotionally. And we'll discover it pretty much instantly after we do that. Does that make sense? So it's a different way, um, it's one of the ways that obviously we teach in the spirit world. And it's obviously the way that we want to engage here on Earth as well in teaching. Make sense? And if we come across to them. Hey, Jim, can you speak just about health and healing, health and healing teams? I imagine it sits under the soul sort of uh, part of Yes, it does. Um, on site and off site, and especially body work, and if you want to provide our services, massage, project, chiropractic. Yes, all of those things are under the human soul area of activities. And uh, again, under the umbrella of the teams, they will be done, all done voluntarily. However, people will obviously, out of their feelings of their heart, want to give to the people who have assisted them. And that will happen in between. And it's, it's your own business how all of that happens. <laughs> Does that make sense? The gifts that come to the organisation, we have to declare as a taxation thing. And, and by law, each one of you who receive gifts from others need to declare that as a taxation thing. But that's your business, not mine. What you do, honestly, there is your business. The team itself, though, will be governed by the same principles that you've seen me apply, which are, we don't ask for any payment. So if the team begins to ask for a payment, that would, that would need to be addressed initially. With regard to health and healing, yes, the area of the soul will be a huge area of like healing, health, but it will be a focus on the emotional part of the healing. So instead of doing the physical things so much... Yeah, be, well, it would be linking, linking the emotions and the physical thing. And what I do as the person who's doing the body work, maybe, how my soul is impacting on the person that I'm working with, and how when I do, you know, that whole interrelationship, body, soul, body, soul, um, and hoping to learn and expand our areas of expertise, if you like, in that, in that area. Yeah. Also, redemption as well. Yeah. Yeah. Very important, yeah, and helping yeah. with the healing as well. Yeah. So, so my feelings there again are that we, we're going to all have the focus of the same focus, giving the gift, You'll find many of you will receive from each other as well. Sometimes that'll be monetarily, sometimes it'll be with other gifts. 
and in the end we'll get used to actually living in our passion and not worrying about the money at all and everything will just seamlessly occur and hopefully in the end all of us will know, oh, if I've got a bit of, you know, I need a bit of help to break through an emotion, I just go to somebody in the, in the hot soul team, ask them whether they can give me a bit of, bit of work on my body and, and, and we know that there's no demand for a payment or anything like that. However, we'll find through the generosity of ourselves and the love of ourselves, we'll probably desire to give them, particularly if it's benefit, benefited us and, and so forth. And so in the end, We'll have all of these teams working on all these different things and, uh, and enjoying the process of being in their passion, being in their desire, and yet everybody still lives and everybody's still surviving. So the production, the food production team, you know, which is a part of the Flora projects, they, they will eventually give it. That's the idea. We want to just give all the food away. We don't want to keep it. It's pointless keeping it. It will just all spoil. We need to give it away. Who do we give it to? Well, obviously, we'll give it to each other, but also there'll be more than that. So we want to give it to neighbours and friends and you know, pe people who are nowhere near associated with the path. Why not? You know, this is, the, this is the feeling we want to engender. Just we're a part of the bigger, wider community. We want to give to the community. That's the, that's the goal. Of, we want to display God's love in action. That's why I've called it the God's Way of Love organisation. Does that make sense? Yeah. Everyone will have lots of different things to enjoy in the process. Yeah. Yeah. Graham, and then up to Natalie. Um, hey, Joe. As a team member, if we should feel that our team leader is in an addiction, um, I would assume that we might have a chat to them about it uh, and feel our own emotions as well as what it brings up. Um, is there anything else we should do other than that? No, I would stay on the team, let yourself be triggered by the team leader. Sooner or later it will come to our notice, sooner or later. And uh, if you wish to discuss it with somebody who's the learning centre manager, that's fine too. There's no harm in discussing it. Uh, however, uh, bear in mind that most of the time we'll already know what's going on. And, uh, and a lot of times we'll, you know, stop, stop what's happening if, if we feel it's out of hand. And obviously we want to give each person time to make changes. So we don't want to just cut them off, say, oh, you, you, you know, you know, good here, so just that's the end of it. However, there are times when we'll say to them, look, you know, you've been had, had enough time now to deal with this particular thing. It's time for you to step down and we'll find somebody else who, who, who can do it instead. Yeah. Thank you. So don't feel afraid about talking about it with us, but talk to the people who are, uh, rather, don't talk in your addictions. Many, many of you at the moment go to, you go, oh, you know, I won't talk to the person that I have the issue with. I'll talk to Joe Blow and his neighbour and the next door neighbour. And went, I won't talk to the person that actually I have the issue with. What's the loving thing to do? Talk firstly to the person you have the issue with. Isn't that the loving thing to do? Well, so, the loving thing to do would be we would be having an interaction and we would be feeling our emotions about that interaction. Yeah, while it's happening. Yes, while it's happening. So, you know, if you, while it's happening, feel that the team leader has this feeling, has these feelings towards you, that is in it, say it there and then, if you feel. If you go home and you think about it and you feel it then, go back and bring him up and say it there to him. Does that make sense? and see how it gets resolved. You know, the team leaders should be the most humble person on the team. So therefore, they should also be the most approachable. So it's not a case of um, just taking it all upon myself and saying, well, I have to deal with this emotion myself, whatever it brings up for me, and I won't talk to them until I've got through it. No, I talk to them and just let the team leader will be. Uh, hopefully, the team leaders will be the most humble person in the group. But that being the case, they're going to be the most willing to assist you in any possible way, even if that means that they have to admit they have a fault of their own. So, if you, so if, if I feel that um, somebody in the team leader is in an addiction and that triggers me big time, and I'm still triggered. Um, I could still go and talk to them even though I'm triggered. Of course, but you'd have to be care, take care that you're not now projecting anger at him. 
yeah. rather than rather than actually talking to him about the issue. Yeah. And you would have to, under those circumstances, seriously consider why you're having to talk to him in a state of anger, and that would indicate you're in an addiction. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you know, we we got to remember at this point, everybody who would be involved in the projects will be imperfect. We can't expect perfection from each other, and that in fact is one of the injuries that we need to release. We need to stop expecting perfection of each other and love each other through our imperfections. Does yeah. that make sense? And love, to love each other through your imperfections is to be truthful and loving with each other at all times, not projecting rage or anger or any of the other emotions. That is loving each other no matter what the person's imperfection. <laughs> Obviously, from an organisational perspective, myself and Mary want to address times when we feel someone's getting out of hand. And that will certainly be addressed, as soon as we possibly can, actually, as soon as it comes to our notice. And, but don't think that uh, things come to our notice very readily, because a lot of people cover over their true nature with us, and yet they go and treat somebody else very poorly. So a lot of people come to us, treat us a certain way, and then they go away and treat their own neighbour much more poorly than they've treated us. And, and so we may not be aware of that occurring, and you need, we need to address those kind of things. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and we don't come running to you saying, oh, Joe Boggs, um, that's my team leader, um, he's in an addiction and I spoke to him about it and he denied it. <laughs> and I'm perfectly happy for you to do that if that's what you want to do. Uh, but you might find that quite a lot of your addictions get addressed in the process. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, there will basically not be uh, rules. You know, many of you are still trying to attempt to apply principles into rules. You're turning principles into rules. Lo loving principles don't need to be turned into rules. They just need to be applied. So, so you know, when I, what I mean by that is that quite often we try to make a rule. Oh, if a person feels that way, then they must be angry. If a person's like this, they must be this. You know. And the soul doesn't work that way, and, uh, and obviously we obviously want it to work that way in our head a lot of the times because we want to understand what's going on, but, but our soul doesn't work that way. Fear-based. It's a fear-based fear thing. We need to get rid of the fear-based things. That's one of our addictions, wanting to know what to, do, to, what to, get, to, it right. to get it right because we want to avoid when we got it wrong. Like many of you are going to get things wrong, by the way, with this, and that's great. It is good. See, you see, see, you don't think it's good, but it is good because the, the more you get it wrong, the more you realise the truth. Does that make sense? You ask any very uh, powerful, uh, financially wealthy person on the planet whether they had a whole series of successes before their last success, and most of them will tell you they just had a whole series of failures before their last success. And why is that? And they learn from all of those failures. Look, it's a powerful way of learning. Powerful way. Don't be afraid it's, to make mistakes. You remember we're talking about you've got to see the ward. You've got to go and look and see the ward, and then you can start to heal it. If you stepping into a process like this often like brings the mirror right up there into your face, and you can still go no 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 no, or you can just look. Yeah. And once you look. It, the process has already started. You're already in the process of change once you're willing to fully acknowledge the truth of what's there. And that's, that's the beautiful thing about making mistakes. Mm -hmm. And we're going to encourage you to allow yourself to make mistakes, but we're also going to encourage you to notice them and to be aware of them. And we want to encourage you to enjoy the process of finding out your mistakes. Rather than going, oh, I don't want to hear that, oh, I don't want to hear that, oh, I feel terrible when I hear a mistake, that's another addiction. You see, we are, we are full of these addictions where we want to only hear good things about ourselves. Anything bad, you know, we, we, we cut all that off. You can't grow like that. You can't change like that. So don't do that. Start doing something differently. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay, um, what, what else do we need to say? Practical things about. Just the homework, though. Sorry? Yeah, you've got sidetracked halfway through homework. Homework, that's right. Homework. <laughs> homework. About an hour ago. <laughs> homework. That nobody wants to do. 
You want to do something? So the first thing I said I think was about passions and desires. So what you want to do over the next couple of weeks, if you want to come to the next talk, is uh, look at your passions and desires. Right? Now obviously it's a given that you have a passion for, or maybe not, but, but it's, a given, it's a given that most of you will automatically want to have a passion to get closer to God and a passion to get closer to your soulmate, passion to get closer to yourself. So you can leave those three off the list of this list. And what you can do is focus on more the more passions that are to do with your nature and personality. So if you really love animals, really love birds, really love you know nature, if you really love technology, if you really love science, mathematics, whatever it is, arts, music, drama, whatever it is, write down and feel about those passions. You follow me? Then, then my second suggestion to you is to prioritise those passions. In other words, which passion is the strongest one you feel inside of you? Which one is the second strongest you feel? Let yourself feel about the strength of these passions within you. Now, this is obviously a work in progress, so you don't think that you fix your patterns today, you get onto a team, Halfway through the team, you realise, wow, my passion is actually this other thing that I noticed those guys over there doing. That's fine. Leave that team, go to the other team straight away. Does that make sense? No. Uh, we're, uh, we're totally okay with that. This is free will in practice. You need to follow your passion, and we're not, we're not, we don't want to make rules. Oh, you decided right at the beginning that it was that passion. Now I'm going to allow it to the others. That's the way it goes. It's not like that, right? Everything will change. But prioritise them just so that you know initially what ones you're going to be most interested in hearing about in terms of the teams. And so before, before you look at the list of teams, I would encourage you to do that. Otherwise yeah. you'd be tempted to try and figure out which team I fit into. Yeah. Many of you look at the teams and oh, I think it's better. But, but forget about that. You need to feel here. Feel your passions here. So the third thing, once you've felt your passions and you've prioritised them, then ask yourself what teams, and teams and projects would appeal to you. To your desires, right? So now you've got a marrying up, if you like, of those passions and desires with, with a with what you envisage to be a particular team. The fourth thing then to do is to think about the scope of the team. Now, I am purposely not telling you the scope of the team. I'm, I, I have been, in the document that you will have available to you, very vague. I've purposely been very vague. I've actually written hundreds of pages of documents about, about what each team will finish up doing. Right? And I'm in the process of still doing that. However, and I don't want to tell you what those things are yet. The reason why is because I want you to feel about them. To feel about what the scope would be. Let yourself imagine, if you had open slather, and you were an artist, what would you do? What, what kind of things would you come up with? What kind of things would you be involved in? If you were a musician and you had open slater, what would you want to do? What kind of things would you want to be involved in? What kind of, uh, allow be, yourself to feel the scope. Let yourself be specific, you know? Yeah, yeah, feel the specific, like, I would like to go to, go to uh, you know, schools and teach them how to play guitar. That might be one part of that feeling that you have, you know? So, so be specific like that. Let, let yourself feel what the team scope would be. So when I talk about the arts team, what do we mean? Like, what, what, how big is that team going to be? What kind of scope is it going to cover? How does that, you know, what kind of projects are they going to be involved in, you think? That kind of thing. Let yourself feel about it and note it all down. Because what we're going to do is integrate some of this into these teams. That you, that you, we want to be, we want you to be a part of the creation process, even though I've already got fairly like long-winded things about that I've already talked about. 
but we want you to be a part of that process. And that is a part of you engaging your passions and desires. Does that make sense? So let yourself feel about that, the scope of the team. And then come along to the sessions. Now the sessions are uh, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, both days, uh, second and third, and third of April. And uh, now, obviously, there's quite a lot of teams, and it's in, um, I, I want to cover quite a lot of information um, in the time period. And plus, of course, if I love myself, I want to have a break occasionally. So, so there'll be two hour session uh, from ten to twelve. There'll be a one hour break, and then there'll be a one to three, and then probably three thirty to five thirty or something like that. All right, so three, there'll probably be three two hour sessions. And do you just want to explain what the. I will be over the coming uh, week or so uh, outlining what teams we'll be talking about at each session. So if you can have a look at the net, maybe one week's time or something like that, you'll see which team associated with which session. Now, I'm not, I'm not able to cover every team in that two days. For that reason, we're going to be focusing firstly on the service teams. So if you're interested in the service teams, we're going to be firstly focused on the service teams. And then we'll be focusing only on the other teams, the external teams, that we feel we can get underway immediately. So, and so the purpose of these sessions is to actually um, talk to you guys about more specific things, about what would start to happen in each team, and let you form into teams if you like. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, we, we, you're, you're able to come along to any of the discussions you want. They're open to that. However, the way we'll be organising it is down the front, we'll be setting up some desks down the front here, and the people who uh, have the primary interest in that particular team would like to come down the front so they can write down notes and everything. So bring a notepad and pens and whatever, and then and then the people up the back, the rear of the audience will just sort of be more on hearing or, or the Just if you're interested in... Does that make sense? Hearing, hearing. So you're perfectly happy to come along to all of the teams on the weekend if, if you want to and just find out about every one of them. That's fine. And, and by the way, we won't be presenting every one of them next week because we won't have the time. But but if if we in the end we finish one team, we'll ask all of those people to step back, go back up to the audience, and who's ready, who wants to hear about the next team, and that team will come down, and then we'll discuss a lot of things with that team. Does that make sense? That'd be the basic structure of every hour. There will probably be a new team, okay. and I've just got a structure when those yeah. will happen. So we'll come under the events, the seminars page, is that the right place to put it? Well, my website won't be, my no, new no, website, it'll be on the old website. Yeah, um, the yeah it'll be, uh, I'm not sure where it'll be. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, I, I'm focused on the new website and I can't even remember the old website. There's a, there's a, there's a page that's free seminars um, and you've got summary, like, schedule so you could yeah I'll put it in the schedule section for the seminars probably so if you have a look at that and we'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll marry up you know the teams but, but don't expect that every team will be represented because they, they won't it, it'll be the teams we feel initially that we want to get started on because we have some initial projects already in mind that we can get started on straight away which will involve some initial teams so that's the idea does that make sense to everyone? Okay. So are there any questions about that process? Now, the next session, the next uh, session you'll find, after we do this two weeks time, there will be a lot of disorganisation. The reason why is that some of you want to take control when you're not really ready to take control, and others of you will think you're not ready to control, and you're the ones that we really want to lead the team. And there'll be all sorts of things happening as a result. There's also going to be a collection of information. Because at the end of the day, we want to have all the person's names and email addresses connected to that team so that when we send out information that re for reflecting a project about that team, that it's easy for us to send out the information. It's just a matter of clicking on the team, sending them an email. Does that make sense? 
and so we want to have, you will need to have an email address, is what we're saying. And it's too hard if you only have a phone number. We need to have email addresses because the phone, it's too hard for us to phone everybody involved. Does that make sense? Good question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, with that email, my question was, if you are not able to attend the seminar in two weeks' time, how do you become part of those teams? And all of the information will be presented at the seminar. All of the weekend will be recorded and it will all be produced just the same as we're doing everything else. You'll have an re audio recording of it just like we have with everything else. And so you'll have all the instructions about how, how you do all of those things. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. We will probably, after a few weeks, uh, be assigning team leaders and the team leaders will take more responsibility in keeping their, everyone up to date with those kind of things. I just wonder how it's, oh, thanks for a zesty presentation yesterday. I just wonder how it's going to go for folks that only have weekend time to offer. Well, again, uh, there are many things that can be done remotely. Remember I said that in every one of the teams there's documentation that needs to occur, there's internet, there's research that needs to occur, there's, so there's like things that you can do on the internet, the discovery of all this kind of information, typing up all those kind of things. There's lots of things that can be done. It's just a matter of how much desire you have to do it. My feelings are, the more you're involved in the team, the greater your progress will become. Now, we've purposefully set these teams up in country locations. And there's a lot of reasons why we've done that, which I won't go into at this point with you. Uh, but I will perhaps do that at some future point when we discuss earth changes and other events like that. But uh, at this point, it will depend a lot on your personal desire as to whether you, how much you will be involved. Nobody is ever going to threaten you with regard to, oh, you're not involved, you've only been here once every month and, you know, that's no good and all that kind of stuff. It's totally up to you how frequently you're involved. You will find great personal benefits of being involved. But you don't have to be involved. It's all a gift. You're you're all just participating in something freely together. So there's no. Uh, it's not like you've got to sign on the dotted line and give yeah. this many hours. And, and the only reason why we want to collect the information about email addresses is so we have a way of communicating with you if something stopped. So, for example, if the project leader is going through an emotion, we may stop the entire project. If there's no backup project leader who we feel is capable of doing the same job, we will stop the entire project and we need a way of communicating that with you. And this is where we will be updating the God's Way of Love website quite frequently as a result. So it will be just a matter of keeping an eye on it to see what's happening each time something's happening. Hopefully in the end I'll have someone who will be able to update those websites rather than being me. And then once that happens, it will be quite easy to uh, keep a lot of it updated on a very regular basis. The way I've constructed the sites is so that somebody can update it easily if they know, they know the language and they know the tools. Any other questions? Did you want to uh, come up and the safety team this weekend? Oh, one thing we had to mention is the safety team. Yeah. Um, uh, that's something I was forgetting all the way along, isn't it? And what we've done is we feel, we feel quite strongly that there needs to be, the safety team need to be versed in basic first CPR aid and CPR. And, uh, and so there, we have the ability, it's a, the problem is that it's, it's $110, uh, $120 um, per person. And there's 15 people that we need to run the first course. Uh, we, we're not charging that. That's the person who's doing the course is charging that. So they're, they're just a normal commercial place that we've investigated. A local place. A local place in Kingaroy, isn't it, Ange? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Is that on? Is that my kind of Yep, far away. Yep, it's on. It's on? Yeah. Yep, um, a local provider in Kinaroi. Yeah, all yep. um, you know, years and years of ambulance training. Yep, 
And the course will be run in Kingaroy? Yep, in their facility or in ours. Their yeah. facility would be more yep. preferable. Yep. And, uh, and it's $120 per person. And if we get the 15 people, we can go ahead with the course. Uh, but, but at the moment, there's only $600 in the God's Way of Love Kitty. So that's not enough to pay for uh, uh, 14 or 1500 dollars worth of course. Does that make sense? So, so it will have to be something that is individually paid for. Where possible, we've only got enough to pay for four or five people to do it. And so if you do want to do it and you don't have the funds to do it, but can I just say, don't do it unless you're going to be present a lot of the time on the property. The reason why is because it's no good having 15 people do a first aid course and none of them go to the property and we've got no people to do first aid on the property. Does that make sense? So it has to be people who are prepared and have a desire to be able to help others in terms of first aid. And uh, if we don't get enough people, then we'll just delay that. And actually, every single project will be delayed until such a time as we have those people up to speed. In other words, every other project will be delayed until we have people who are on site who are able to give first aid. Does that make sense? So that we would love to be able to pay for the safety team to do it, but we don't have the donations at the moment. No. So it's really just an option if people um, feel that they would like to fund that for themselves. Yep. Um, now, how many people would be interested in that at this point? And being on the safety team. Yes. So, if, if the hand, if you could just uh, is, notice who. Could all of you give your details to Angela after the session's finished today? And it might be enough people. Okay? I think we needed 12 to 15, didn't we? How many did we need? There wasn't really a. Wasn't really a number? A number. I said, you know, could we. Could we use the mic if you've got. They just like to have no more than um, 25 for one instructor. Right, yeah. And we were feeling 12 to 15 yeah. group would be a good yeah. size group. So, but it could be 10, couldn't it? Yeah. yeah. As long as we have a group of people who are willing to be present most of the time, and and can I suggest to you, Rita, you've got enough on your plate, darling. <laughs> <laughs> you have. <laughs> Rita always wants to help, but she's got enough on her plate. Looking after a Down syndrome child 24 by 7. That's it, that. That's it. Yeah. Remember that. Remember, I was going to do this with you. <laughs> I told you that. And so, just, yeah, have, make sure you have the capacity to assist and are willing to be present. And if you could talk to Ant after the group, so that would be all right. Is there any questions that you would yeah, ask? You know uh, mics, please, because otherwise we don't get it. AJ, do you know how many people may have an existing? Yeah. How um, many people do have an existing? I was just about to ask that, yeah. And but how many of those people have a passion for it? And is it current? <laughs> and is it current? Can, like, how, can you see how the, risky can you see the difference? If you just turn around and see the difference. How many of you, again, have had, got an existing, right? Now, there's a good 30 or so, maybe even more. How many of you have a passion for it? <laughs> Can you see? This is what we need to learn. Is I'm interested in the people with a passion for it to actually do it. Because it's no good having people with no passion for it doing it because you're not going to do it in love. Does that make sense? You're not going to do it with that loving basis. So it doesn't really matter how many people already know. But what, it, what matters is how many people have a passion to do it. Yeah. When you say on the property, what does that involve? Like, I've got so, intentions of moving up here. Yep. Is it actual time on the actual... Well, the people who are interested in uh, the flora and fauna will obviously be spending a lot of time... Working on, on the working property on yourself. The property, um, construction. Um, no, I'm thinking specifically for the safety team. Yes, 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 yes. If, we, we, What we need to do is give you a bit of background. Yeah. The background is that there will be projects happening on the property. Now, those projects, some of them by nature are going to be a little dangerous because they'll be involving machinery perhaps, there'll be tools involved and so forth. As a result of that, we need people who are, who are able to give first aid to be present while those particular events are occurring. Does that make sense? And so if we're not able to be present, then there's sort of, while it's great to get the qualification, 
And at the end of the day, if we're not able to present, there's not much benefit to the property while those projects are happening. So the reason I mentioned the teams is because quite likely you might be on the safety team as well as the Thora team. Or if, so. Because you'll so, have different passions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. so, and there needs to be a willingness to go out there when there's something on. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that the whole team has to. There, there, it, there needs people. to be a bit of a roster or something like that yeah. where members of the team are present. So, you know, we only need one or two, probably two, members of the team present for any particular project. So if there's 10 or 12 people, that means there's a, there's a roster of six. So that means you only need to rug up once every six projects, if you wanted to. Does but ideally, we would like everyone to have a first aid or a number of people on every team to have a first aid qualification. But because we're just starting, it's, it's kind of tricky. But we also want to focus on the, the passion of the person. You know, we, we don't want to say, let's all have, go and do a first aid qualification and three quarters of us go, well, I don't want to do that. <laughs> like, you know, that, that, that is not going to be loving to those people. So, but, so that's why I asked, who really would like to be a part of that? And, but the scope of the safety team will not just be restricted to doing CPR and no. re-impressing. It, it will actually so why, be a like, much greater scope of that team than just doing first aid type things. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. There'll be a lot of soul-based things about why accident occurred, why did the accident occur, what emotions were there in the accident, who we were involved with, what emotions did they have. There'll be a lot of investigation about why an accident occurs. Does that make sense? That are all related to emotional issues. We, want to be, we don't want to just have an accident, fix them up, and then go, oh, let's go along the length until we have the next accident. We want to know what the emotions were inside of the people involved that created this particular accident. What was going on? Does that make sense? Deal with the cause. Yeah, so it'll be an interesting team, actually. And you'll be, because you will be, many of you in that team will be involved in different, uh, in the different projects, you will see a wide variety of projects happening while you're involved in the team. So it's one of those teams, it's like the documentation team. There was one of those teams that would be involved in lots of different things, not just one thing. Yeah. So. Um, I wonder, AJ, um, how many people already have health and safety training who want to be involved? And I think the point of asking that question is, is as much point of asking the previous one. If they're, if they're passionate about it, they'll join no, I'm only interested in who's passionate about it. Totally. And to be I, frank, I, I haven't found many people passionate about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I totally agree, but probably it is a necessary um, item when there's dangerous machinery to be used. I agree, and one of the projects of the safety team is actually going to be to get people who know how to use equipment to actually be versed in the proper correction operation of that equipment and then to train others in the proper and correct operation of that equipment. So part of the role of the safety team is to actually train people in the correct operation of specific equipment. Does that make sense? And that will be part of that role. So some of the safety team will go off and do different courses, they'll come back, translate that course into action and so forth. So it'll be, it, it'll be quite an interesting thing, I feel, myself. Um, so um, have we covered everything we need to cover about the safety team? Yes. And I'll be able to talk to you and give you details and so forth. It's something that probably happen in the next week or two, won't it? So it's something that we want to happen as soon as possible. Um, Alex, you had a question? Yep. I um, just wanted to ask, what do you do if you haven't got enough people for a team? If I haven't got enough, when do you say I haven't got enough? One person is enough for a team. What about I guess like, he's the legal. <laughs> <laughs> what if you're bipolar and you've got issues with the team leader? So, what was that? You have a single issue with the team leader, yeah. You're the only person on the team and you've got an issue with the team leader. Yeah. That would be interesting. <laughs> Well, no, like say um, with water course management, yeah, yeah. it's obviously going to be like digging beaches and stuff, and, and I'm not really interested at all. So, um, ah. Water see, course management is one of my passions. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. fascinating. Man, you should come on our property. We, we've told, we talked to the group of people a bit, and Dennis led them around the, the other week, showing them what we've done to our property about some areas of water course management. 
And the majority of you, how did you feel about it afterwards? Excited. You're really excited about it, yeah. So what's happening a lot, Alex, for yourself and, and others too, is we're looking at, oh, there might be some hard work or there might be some kind of work that I don't want in that. But actually, the truth is, when you fully engage your passion, you it's quite different to what you imagine sometimes. And, and we're often, we often, once we can see a purpose in things, we often have a very different outlook in terms of our passions. You see, a lot of us have been brought up all throughout our school life, let's face it, we've been brought up being taught things that most of the time you believe you're never going to use. Aren't you? Yes. And you just, in the end, get sick of that, don't you? Like, at the end of the day, you go, what's the point of doing that? Like, I'm not using it, it's pointless. And, and, and that actually depresses the passion. It actually makes the passion go away. So you might have been passionate, right when you were a child, you might have been passionate for mathematics. But do you think, do you think the mathematics presented to you in primary school and high school made you passionate about it? Of course not. But once you start seeing it in practical applications on the ground, in the air, in all of these different areas of physics, many of you will reignite that passion for mathematics. Does that make sense? And you'll start doing some things that you never thought you'd ever conceive of doing as a result of that. And the same applies with the ground, the soil, and all these other aspects. Many of you think, oh, I'm going to have a passion now, I don't want to dig ditches and whatever else. But a lot of it's not going to be that kind of thing either. But, but when it is, you'll have a passion doing it, just like I actually have. If, you, if you've ever seen me working around at home, you'll, I have a passion for digging ditches, man, particularly when it's digging ditches for the right reason. And as a result of that, you know, you find yourself being uh, growing in all these different areas that you didn't imagine you would grow. In. And uh, the truth is that every single person on this planet needs to get reconnected with the soil, reconnected with vegetation and nature, reconnected with animals, birds and other, other things. And our city life, for the majority of us, has disconnected us so far from all of these things that we don't even really know what we're passionate about. And that's fine too. If you find after all of this you don't really know what you're passionate about, then attend every meeting and see what comes up. You know, you can do that too. Yeah, I'm just saying it was, it's all my injuries. Yeah. I don't want to be speaking. Exactly. For hard labour of workers who slave driving. Yeah. Yeah. Labouring for plumbers with um, knee deep in poo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, all that does is conjure up these old emotions. Whereas what we'll be doing is far different. We were having, remember, we're having a love and truth focus, so there'd be a loving reason for doing everything we do. And when you connect with that loving reason, it's amazing how it ignites your passion. Yeah. It's going to be very powerful for many. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering, how do we um, donate to the God's Way of Love Foundation? At the moment, the only way to do it is the contribution box that's <laughs> red on the back. And we, we have yet to open a, a bank account for it, uh, as yet, which we were thinking of doing this coming week. And uh, because we've only just received the ABN and ACN and all those kind of details, you know, all the technical stuff. And um, we uh, are still waiting for non-profit status, uh, which means that we have... With the, with the God's Way of Love organisation, we have to pay tax on the donations until such time as we get the non-profit status. Actually, it's backdated. It, it, oh, it might be backdated for us if we get non-profit status. We applied for it in the 21st of January, I think it was, so it'll be backdated to the 21st of January when, when and if we receive it. We're not too hung up on with if we receive it, because we still want to accomplish what we want to accomplish, whether we get the non-profit status or not. We're going to run it as a non-profit organisation whether we get the status or not. So um, it's really immaterial to us. But, but we will have to pay tax on the income, which can be quite severe on a company, 30%. So that would mean 30% of the donations get paid in taxation, um, or 30% of the profit, so-called profits of the organisation. If we run the organisation with no profits, in other words, no bank account, um, and we spend everything that we receive, then obviously we're not going to be paying a huge amount of tax except for some GST taxation, which is 10% of what happens. So, but, but it'd be lovely if we get the ITE, the income tax exemption, and that would mean that we can use more of the funds that are donated on the projects at hand. 
So if there's like lots of money that people want to donate at the moment, um, is it wise to wait until that happens, or how would you? No, it's immaterial because we're going to run it as a non-profit anyway. But if we do get the non-profit uh, status, it will be It'll back, be back to, to the date, so we won't ever have to pay tax on it. Yeah. But it's, I mean, obviously, right now the world is running on money, so probably if the income can come and help out at the moment, that would also speed things up for the, for the well, way ahead? Or? There are some projects, which we'll talk to you about next time we get together, that will require a significant amount of funds. For example, um, we, we want to buy a lot of hay. Like, uh, we, we want to revegetate a lot of the ground. A lot of the ground's been severely disturbed. We want to fix a lot of that up. We estimate that we might need up to anywhere up to a thousand bales of round hay, round bales of hay, which is which are around thirty dollars each. That's thirty thousand dollars worth of hay. And there's we, there's also a project we want to do with collecting water. The, the water collection project is going to have rainwater tanks underneath a, a structure. The structure is already partially being provided by Brad, but but we need to finish the structure, get the water tanks, and all those kind of things. We estimate there might be anywhere up to. 40 to $50,000 needed for that particular project. We are not going to engage a project unless there's the money to complete the project. Does that make sense? There are certain things we can do without money. There are, in fact, hundreds of things that we can do without money. And uh, as a result, those projects, once we get some basic things done, there's a few access property problems we have to the property because of the erosion that's occurred due to the damage of different areas and, and you know the clearing that occurred caused damage to the erosion which has caused problems. So we need to fix up all of that and repair it. So that's one of the first projects. But what happens after those those fix up projects have uh, begun is that we, we, we can focus on projects that have very little uh, financial uh, needs. And some of those projects, for example, can involve the community. So, for example, Andrew's already spoken to a school in Troy and they are willing to build nest boxes for us if we supply them with the timber and because uh, uh, they've got all the tools. So on the property, there's all these flitches which are offcuts of timber that could be used to make nest boxes. So all it means is a group of people grabbing all that timber and giving it to the school and, away, and with the, some designs of nest boxes and before we, we can proceed with that project. Does that make sense? So a lot of the projects are going to just require a bit of labour, not much cost. Other projects are going to be a bit more costly and, and, and obviously have a bit more, um, you know, it'll be dependent on donations as to what happens with those particular projects. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Right, back. Just a couple of you. Firstly, give recipients. Are you applying for that so people will get? Sorry. Uh, no. Okay. No. Yeah. Okay. What was the question? Oh, yeah. Deducting gift recipient requires that we have a specific clause in the constitution which would resolve, which would resolve if it was removed. And by the way, it's not removed by a process of law. It's removed by individual people deciding. And if that is removed, it would require the closing of our entire organisation. Okay. So we're not prepared. So once you get it, if it's revoked, that fits the whole organisation. You have to give away all the donations to somebody else. You have to give away all the properties to somebody else. Everything. And so from our perspective, that's not a long-term thing that we would like to do. With the non-profit status, if it's, if, it's, if it's removed or revoked, all you've got to do is pay taxation. So that's a much better option than a deductive gift recipient. And just the other thing, without putting it to the pump even further, will today's talk be on the website before the second and third, so we can go over it again and make notes? I hope so, but um, I don't want to... I'm, what I'm hoping to do is actually, within the next three days, upload the new Divine Truth website, and if I can do that, then then... I don't have to edit the old website. Does that make sense? So, um, so part of my process over the next few days. So by probably next weekend, I'm hoping to have the Divine Truth website uh, fairly functional and most of it up and running. And if that's the case, then I'll certainly upload everything we've done this weekend as well. Okay. Thank you.
Yeah. And thank you for all your hard work and your honesty with everything. There's a few people having a go, I know, saying, oh, it's for AJ and this and that, but so many thousands of people are going to be benefited all around the world. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Myself, as I say to you, myself and Mary have no investment in the property whatsoever. And we're very happy with our own property. We don't need anything more than what we've got. And we're very happy to, to do the work that we're doing on our property, independent of what happens at the Learning Centre. However, we're sort of, at the moment, using our property as a bit of an experiment before the Learning Centre, in the sense that it's a way for us to work on a little property with a group, small group of people who are going to be teaching other people. So it's sort of a way to, instead of running around a 600 acre property, the 40, pro 40 acre property is a lot easier to work on. So I'm buying all the materials and everything for all of that, but um, the guys come and every Tuesday, and, and by the way, anyone's uh, welcome to come along uh, in, every, any Tuesday, and uh, be a part of that team learning about flora management and soil management at this point. And, uh, and we're doing that because we want a team of people versed in the knowledge so that when we hit the real property, we're not, everyone's not twiddling their thumbs saying, what do I do, what do I do? So that's the reason for that. Yep. Um, one, one, one of my questions um, was about children. Um, I'm making the assumption that children will have to join in as well. Yep. With projects, yeah. Um, but bear in mind earlier I said about taking responsibility for our children. That is the responsibility of the parent, not the responsibility of anybody else on the property. So okay. that's so going that to be a very key decision. thing. Yeah, yeah, that was my next question. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also with the um, projects, will there be often several projects running at a time? Yes, in fact, uh, every team will in fact probably be involved in multiple projects. Some of the projects won't be happening on the property. Some of the projects will be happening on the property. So, you know, for, for example, right now there's a production team, of which is Igor and Igor and Igor. <laughs> and, uh, and the production team... And Lena, a bit of And a bit of Lena and some more of Igor. And, uh, <laughs> And the production team is looking after getting all of these videos and sound stuff sorted out and uploading those, and giving them to me ready to upload on the net and also uh, uploading the videos on the net and also producing the DVDs. Now, Eagle's perfectly happy to have people helping, helping that process so that that's, that's fine, but the team has already got a member yeah. and, and, and something is already team. underway yeah. and that's the way it will go. And a lot of times there's multiple projects underway now, bear in mind that in the past, there's often, I've been offered help by people and I've actually refused your assistance because I feel you're in addiction. And in the future, that will definitely be occurring. So, so if we notice you're in addiction about something and we feel that uh, that addiction is present, we won't and cannot accept your assistance until you deal with those addictions. So if it takes a month, that's fine. If it takes six months, that's fine. Because it doesn't matter to me how long it takes. And I'm still going to love you no matter how long it takes. Does that make sense? So, yeah. Is that... Uh, oh, I was crying, so that's... Yeah. No worries. So, yeah, it's going to be a very beautiful process for everyone who wants to be involved. Um, and it's just a matter of how much you want to be involved. And like I said, if none of you want to be involved, well, that's fine. Myself and Mary will work on our little projects at home and, and we'll go with that. But I feel quite strongly that um, our enthusiasm and desire and passion for these kind of projects will rub off on you and I, in fact it will help you identify a lot of your own passions and desires and before you know it we'll have all these teams running around doing all these different things in their passion and desire, enjoying their life and in the process dealing with emotions that are going to get them closer to God in the process. So it's just, I feel, going to be a wonderful way of developing emotionally. Anyway, I think we've answered most of your questions, have we? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so our next meeting is on the 2nd and 3rd of April, here again, and uh, it'll be about the teams, and I'll try and get a lot of those details to you over the coming week and a half or so. But bear in mind there's only one of me, and I'm still doing the emotion. So if it doesn't happen, you just have to come along and take pop luck on that weekend. Nina? The new website that you're feeling you might put up shortly, is that 
a revamp of Divine Truth so that we would be clicking on the same link? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Same address. Yeah, it's the same address, same link. The, still, oh, which is probably let you know the website addresses. Uh, the Divine Truth one will be the first one completely operational. Uh, and I'm hoping, like I said, to have that operational by the end of next week. And that address is still the same www.divinetruth.com and there is also a mirror site.com.au Does that make sense? So you can go either.com or .com.au with those two. And there is... I want to, sorry, you sorry. want to say? I want to tell you about divinetruthseminars.com Do you want to talk about that? Uh, there are people who have other websites that we don't have anything to do with I, I that are aware. linked to our website. Yep. Yeah. Yes, I wasn't aware of the full extent of this website. Some guys in the US have set this up. It's, oh, you're not writing that? No. Okay. It's uh, divinetruthseminars.com, I think it is. And on the site you can not only watch very many of the DVD, so if you don't have the DVD, it's on the site, but you can also download it to save, so you can keep files of the different um, different talks that have been done in the past. I think, but the same rule applies, the ones that we don't have masters for from last year are not on that site yet. So, yeah. if, you've, if you've got a full set from up the back, you've got everything that's available there. On the new Divine Truth website, there is a link to every YouTube uh, video that has been uploaded. So. And for people overseas, we're working on having translation in Russian, French, Spanish, Spanish. German. 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 <laughs> very German. and possibly Greek. And possibly Japanese. Yes, very <laughs> shortly. So under Secrets of the Universe, people in different countries can, you know, that would just be with the Secrets of the Universe initially. Does that make sense? Now there's a team of people who are doing that, and uh, they uh, obviously can do it at home. They don't need to travel to a place to do it, and as long as they communicate. Every one of those teams finds me getting involved in it at some point, and uh, sometimes I email back saying, oh, it wasn't a very lovely email, <laughs> and some of you have already found that happening. So, And this site and some other sites are not linked to us, except no. by the by the fact that people have put them together in their own design. And uh, I will be referring to some of those sites in our uh, new website. Yep, so these guys have set this up themselves under their own steam and the donations on that site go to help them keep that up. Yep. And that's the two. And that's the God's Way of Love uh, website address, uh, godswayoflove.org. Uh, uh, the pageant books are back in stock, is that? Like, you've got some there, yeah? I haven't put that on the website yet, so, but I will get around to it. It's one of the many things that I'm still working through. Yeah. And you're not charging any prices for them anymore, it's by donation, isn't it? Yeah. Nice. I collected an archive photo of Divine Truth Seminars from 
it turns out that we haven't got a team to do a major thing, then those major things won't happen until the team comes along. It's quite simple. Alright, I think that pretty much does this, doesn't it? Yeah. So hopefully, uh, do all those things over the coming couple of weeks and we'll catch it with each other in two weeks' time at the same venue. Bring along some munchies if you want to eat. We, we won't be able to do that. The hospitality team won't be up and running by yet. And so, uh, so that won't be happening. So if you can bring along some of your own, that'd be great. And uh, we can then work on developing these teams and getting a bit more organisation happening. And there's already some projects that we can begin and we'll be talking about that with the learning centre managers and also some of the team leaders we've already established. And as a result, we should be able to start hitting the ground, if so, so cool, within a few days or weeks after we've had our next meeting. Which is exciting. And any of you who wish to learn about the flora side of things and are around our place uh, Tuesdays, I think it's about 9, nine o'clock on Tuesday morning. Do you still want um, someone to coordinate that in case we want to cancel? Uh, Di Di's coordinating that, so if you give you an email just, address yeah, to Di. Talk to Di uh, about Can you put your hand up, Di, so everybody knows? Yep. And if you give your email address to Di, so that she, if we do cancel it, she will be able to email it to you and let you know that we cancel it. But we're doing that uh, the next two weekends, the next weekend, this, this sorry, this Tuesday and the following. This Tuesday is going to be on, uh, most probably on recovery of dam walls. Um, and uh, sorting out beautifying dam walls that have been that have been obviously uh, turned over and heaved up and all that stuff. And uh, we'll be looking at recovery of water courses in the next week after that, um, because they are some of the jobs that we also need to have happening on the sanctuary. And we want to get a, a group of people who are, understand the process to help the others who come along to volunteer when those projects occur. Thank you so much uh, for your time. Sir. And, uh, we've really enjoyed sharing with you today um, a bit of a vision for the future for, for us. Hopefully you can feel our passion. We're, we're pretty passionate about what we want to set up and, and so um, hopefully you can share some of that and feel about some of that. We're looking forward to spending a bit more time with many of you in an interactive way rather than in a seminar way. Um, these seminars are quite exhausting for us at some times and uh, we're giving out lots of energy and information um, and we'd much prefer to have some interaction on a different basis. So we're looking forward to some of the changes that will be happening this year with regard to that. We love you very much and we would like to also thank you for your donations this weekend which have gone partly to covering some of the costs of the DVD production and so forth. And, uh, and we'd like to thank you too for um, your future involvement for those of you who want to be involved in this entire project. But I, I'm sure you're actually going to enjoy yourself uh, a lot if you allow yourself to be involved. We love you guys. Love you guys. And uh, look after yourself. Please deal with some of those addictions. <laughs> Thank you. It'll be better. It'll be Feel better. better. <laughs>